Have a great day and a great week ahead. Welcome to Vancouver. Myself, Jeremy Winters. Not good. And our other guy, Craig Thomason, is up there with us. We're hunting with Abe Dugan. Let's, let's try that again. I'd met him a couple times at the shows, at the outdoor shows, and, and uh, I really liked his enthusiasm and, and uh, just couldn't wait to get up here and go hunting. Abe has some trophy bears here. They, they have a very good average as far as size and skull size. Success is generally always 100% plus. We're here to kill a big bear, and that's what we're going to do. Well, we're officially uh, stuck here at the motel. Uh, Mike got to leave at what? Five o'clock this morning. Five he's, he's probably hunting right now. And uh, we're stuck here waiting for uh, Abe to come back and pick us up to take us to a different area. We gotta play a joke on Jeremy while he's right here, so let's find something. You know, Jeremy and I, we spend a little bit of time together on the road and trade shows and shooting schools, so. Uh, we get along really well and we, we kind of rip each other a little bit. To some degree, Jeremy got a little bit what it was coming to him. While Craig and Jeremy wait for their hunt to begin, Mike's hunt is already well underway. We're up here in the beautiful mountains of British Columbia. Now, unfortunately, we, we planned on all staying together originally, but because of the weather and some of the slides not melting off quick enough, um, Paul and I came up to this spot here to hunt with Billy. Uh, it was about an hour drive to the boat landing. Billy's there to pick us up in the boat, uh, load up our gear. Maybe I should maybe I should have put my rain gear on, huh? How long is it right? About 40 minutes. Okay. 35 minutes actually. The lake is pretty calm. I'm pretty fortunate to come up here exactly to the same spot where Garrett and Aaron were last year and see see some of the country they were running around in. Our guide's Billy. Who's this one? Billy's a great guy. He's been guiding for Abe Dugan for a long time, probably 10 years, he said. Billy's got him a little perch up here to where we can glass five or six big slides behind us. The bears on a regular basis frequent these slides this time of year. They're looking for that new green grass and, and other plants that they like to eat. This honey hole up here at the end of this drainage is where Garrett shot his two seven-foot bears. It's where Aaron shot his bear, and it's probably gonna be where we shoot our bear. It's pretty interesting, this is an old logging camp. Just around the turn of the century, the, the guys got here and started timbering this place. They call them fallers, the guys with the chainsaws and how they just lay the trees over. Uh, I'm sure there's been bears around here eating on these slides for, for just as long as they've been timbering it. Uh, it's just a lot of history on these slides here. But what these, what these clear cuts and these slides do is give the bears the foliage and the, the nutrients they need as soon as they come out of hibernation. And that's primarily how you hunt this place, is you're, you're glassing from one vantage point on these clear cuts uh, to the next vantage point. The weather was pretty pretty hardcore. The, the fog was in, um, the glassing, the visibility was a little limited. But we did manage to see some bears. Just off the bark of the light there, right on the edge, you see them there? The furthest spot where we're going to see bears is about 1,500 yards. Uh, all the way down to about 600 yards. Now obviously that 1,500 is going to be a little long. What do you think? Go down the road? The only chance we have is go down the road, the trail, and then 
come up and gain some information on this deer cub. He's, he's, a, he's a big bear. He's got a big white bee on his chest. Pretty cool. He's just he's just kind of, I mean, it's so thick around here. He's kind of in and out of the trees down here. We're going to head back, um, try to get a vantage point to where we can see in there and see what happens. Pretty hardcore. The, the fog was in. Um, the glassing, the visibility was a little limited, but we did manage to see some bears. He's, he's, a, he's a big bear. He's got a big white bee on his chest. Pretty cool. We bailed off the hill real quick. Got down in there. We just we just didn't just not able to get on him. Have those trees moving by the way. Dynamite. Yeah. I don't know how those guys are doing. We tried to call them last night on the sat phone but hopefully they're getting into some bears too. All right, Abe, where are we going today? Uh, we got about a two and a half hour drive up the coast here. We're gonna stop in a main camp, get suited up, drop some stuff off, try to do a quick sight in and get a hunt in tonight, nice. somewhere within an hour or so there. That's where... we better get rolling though, we won't be hunting. Picked us up at you know two o'clock in the afternoon and said, "Hey, we were probably gonna probably get some time in for an evening hunt." You know, I was like, "Oh, great, we'll get out, get to spot some bears." You know, we had some pretty good bears located, and we were kind of hoping to get in there right away. And you never know when they're gonna move off to the next place. So we got our gear on and got out there, and That's what you like to see after a long airline trip and customs and the whole nine yards. Uh, essentially 250 yards, had a little rock about that big. Just shot just to the left of it on the first one, nailed it dead center on the second one. So feeling really good about it. Good zero, got a good 200 yard zero. Turtle work from there. And the first slide we showed up at had a, had a bear in it. And then uh, we spotted another bear. One right there. Well, that's a pretty bear there. Twelve hundred to that one. Eight hundred to that one. And another bear. We just spotted another bear. This one's almost got a light-colored back. Another chocolate. He's a little darker chocolate, but. Uh, Looks to be a pretty good bear. We'll get a look at him and, and see. We ended up spotting five bears out of that slide. I have this bad habit of showing up on a hunt and shooting the first thing I see five minutes into the hunt. So I kind of told everybody, you know what? I'm just I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, I'm going to you know I'm going to hold out to the bitter end. You know I'm just not going to get all wound up and in a big hurry to get things done. I don't mind it when you see little ones, but when there's a big one just feeding away, it seems like. Seems like you need to tip them over. I couldn't help myself. You know, a six and a half, seven foot uh, chocolate bear was too much to resist and... Yeah. 8.30, third time. So, is everybody ready? You want him, Brian? Yep. Okay, you make it proud. Yep. Make it proud. Got it, perfect, perfect, done. Oh, he's coming at us. Hey, let me know if he stops again. I got a, a good good shot into him. He went into the trees. Yeah, he stopped. Dude, you smoked him. Hey. I see the black one up top. Let's raise that black one. Everything was happening pretty fast. That was perfect. Hey, finally. <laughs> hey, dude. Hey, Nabe had gone down to to see if he could get a line on the bear, get a blood trail before it got dark. Have a look around for the bears with the dog there and see if we can find them. Hopefully, uh, the situation's under control.
The G7 Ballistic Rangefinder is a one-button ballistic solution that works with your rifle, scope, and ammunition, uses your ballistics to calculate your drop and wind solution to 1,400 yards, four devices, your ballistics, perfect solution. Available at G7.com. The one bear came out, you know, I got a, a good, good shot into him. Got him, perfect, perfect. He went into the trees. Oh, he's coming at us. Hey, let me know if he stops again and all. And, and Abe had gone down to, to see if he could get a line on the bear, get a blood trail before it got dark. And uh, while we were kind of fiddling around, you know, getting things set up, out popped that other big chocolate bear. And uh, so it was just a mad scramble from there. Woo! Oh, okay. oh. Uh, we threw the gun back down, you know, got behind it, got everything ranged up, the wind doped. Ready? Ready. Damn! Smoked him. Smoked him. Smoked him. Smoked him. Stay on him. Got him. Got him. Where's he at? Can you see him? Then left into the thick trees and down. And, uh, and I ran another bullet through another big chocolate bear. <laughs> Two bears in five minutes! <laughs> you know, another great bear. We got a half hour of daylight. Hey, he spun about four circles. It ran right through him. That oh, was perfect. Perfect. Can you see him? No, he went he went right down in the same spot. He was actually going over to check out that other bear. So we okay, I'm gonna be up there in a few minutes. I'm just gonna dig out my flashlight. That's probably a good idea. The second bear was even bigger. Oh, oh holy cow. I, I've never seen anything like this. You guys have to come up and hunt with Dave. Big boar outfitters, and I'm not kidding, big boars everywhere. Five shooter bears now over here. I've killed two of them. So that means tomorrow, Craig will kill two bears and uh, we'll probably just take photos the rest of the four days. It was a pretty emotional day. While Jeremy's excitement is understandable, he may have let it get the best of him. It was, it was getting pretty dark. Got out there uh, and uh, started cutting a track. Uh, we found the first bear right away. Um, he was, you know, 100 yards from where I'd shot him. Oh. Congrats, man. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Awesome, Appreciate buddy. it, guys. Oh, 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 oh. Check this stud out, guys. We got a oh. noggin on this thing. So we decided, well, we'll just get all the pictures taken. You know, everybody was high fiving. That, you know, all right, we, you know, we got one of these bears down. So we got the bear all taken care of, all skinned up. We got it hauled back down to the road and uh, we picked up the trail of where the other bear. And, and it was starting to worry some of us because he, we picked up his trail quite a bit further than from where the other one had died. He found a little blood, but it was getting so dark. We decided just to pull out, we'll go back, um, you know, get up first thing in the morning, and uh, he thought Abe thought he'd just bring his dog along. You know, it's a good blood trailing dog, so we thought he'd bring him along the next day. We got up the next morning, got out there. One taken care of, one to go find. There's some blood here. We're gonna keep working down until we until we run out of room. Oh man, this sucks. That was the big bear. And he's bleeding, I can't believe how far he's went. It's 12.30, we're three hours in. Abe was pretty worried he got in the water. We trailed him clear off the hill, followed his blood. He goes right down off.
So we started tracking it, started tracking it. Sure enough, it went and went and went. Hunting apparel for long-range pursuit provided by Sitka and Kinetrek Boots of Montana. License applications made through Cabela's Tags. Brought to you by Gunworks, G7 Optics, Night Force, Hornady, Flatline Ops, and Caldwell Shooting Supply. I feel right now that this is like <laughs> delete from the get-go. <laughs> <laughs>